So Google has made an announcement and apparently a major breakthrough in quantum computing. The stock is then now uh, going up like crazy and maybe quantum computing will be all the rage in 2025. I wanna share my thoughts and what the heck is going on and I wanna get yours as well. Uh, first, this is from the Google CEO, Sundar Pichai. Uh, he tweets out, introducing Willow, our state-of-the-art quantum computing chip with a breakthrough that can reduce errors exponentially as we scale up using more qubits, cracking a 30-year challenge in the field. In benchmark tests, Willow solved a standard computation in under five minutes that would take a leading supercomputer over 10 to the 25th power uh, years, uh, far beyond the age of the universe. And um, when I saw this, I'm just like, okay, I mean, we had ludicrous speed before, but now we're going like age of the universe speed, uh, which is obviously crazy, crazy fast. Uh, Elon Musk then, of course, chimed in and he says, wow. Uh, Sundar replies, we should do a quantum cluster in space with Starship one day. Uh, Elon Musk replies, uh, that will probably happen. Any self-respecting civilization should at least reach Kardashev type two. In my opinion, we are currently only at uh, less than 5% of type one. To get uh, to approximately 30%, we need to place solar panels in all desert or highly arid regions. Um, basically, we're, we're talking like what appears to be sci-fi kind of stuff. However, Google's saying, hey, we've got quantum computing rolling, and uh, essentially that's what the announcement was all about, um, that they're making major advancements. Um, if you're unfamiliar with quantum computing, don't worry, you're not alone. Uh, I, this stuff, like I keep saying, it sounds like sci-fi. Um, basically, I guess how computers work today, it's binary, so it's zeros and ones. Essentially, that, that's how you know we think about these things and how you build these chips and how you store data. Uh, quantum computing is, is a crazy way of thinking about it. Uh, so you have zero and one, so that's two different states. But then you can also be kind of like anywhere in between. So maybe zero, one, and both, which would be a third state. Um, and then it also said anywhere in between. And I, I guess you're doing these chips on a subatomic level or something. Um, and I say or something because, I, guys, I don't pretend to be an expert on quantum computing. And I'm going to be perfectly frank with you. Uh, very few people are going to be. Um, what I do find interesting about this, though, is apparently it's really, really fast, but not necessarily applicable to any real world applications quite yet. So right now they're just saying, hey, you know, we can do like really crazy fast uh, isoteric computations. It's awesome and, you know, faster than the age of the universe <laughs> compared to, you know, a standard computer. Um, essentially, so right now they're going to try to race to, okay, can we build these things that, to do these things? But the key is going to be, um, can we actually use it for anything useful, be it, you know, uh, build a AI that can, you know, solve cancer, cure cancer, that kind of thing. Or can we build an AI that can do self-driving? Like, and I'm sure Elon Musk is, is licking his chops. Um, the thing is about any of these kind of new technologies, I think what's going to end up happening is Wall Street will, will run away with this sort of narrative of say, hey, you know, this is the next biggest thing, quantum uh, computing, right? Um, and the technology itself is is a semblance of, of real. But, I mean, it, it, Google is certainly doing something, and I don't I don't dispute what Google's doing. But the application is is we're we're pretty far away. Um, I was looking into it. I mean, it's hard to say exactly when we're gonna solve you know quote quantum computing to where you can have it at your house and you'll be you know processing equations like nonstop. And what that really translates to you know you have a crazy amount of computing power um, to where you know I guess you're gonna be we'll all be having, you know, hollow decks and, <laughs> and like, you know, robots talking to us and basically Star Trek kind of stuff. Um, now, I, I don't think this stuff is impossible. I, I, I don't. Um, just that I, I don't think we're to the point to where, you know, that stuff's going to start materializing. But this is sort of why I talk about the Wall Street point of view on it. Um, they need to take any kind of narrative and sell it to you. So I've noticed um, other stocks in the market that are kind of, you know, somewhat related to quantum computing. They were jumping up like crazy. Everything's based on speculation. And this is similar, I'll say similar, not exactly the same, but similar to the other uh, sort of trends that we've been seeing, you know, before it was the electric vehicles, then we saw the crypto craze, which is still here. And then we see the AI thing, which is also still here. And essentially the quantum computing 
um, you know, could say that the argument they're going to make is, hey, guys, this is this is the backbone of all of the advancements that's going to be coming. And it, it's kind of like a I, I won't say necessarily like a new Internet, but I, I, I won't disagree. Like if you can figure out a way to essentially, you know, massively increase uh, computation power, I think that's fantastic. Um, I don't know exactly the energy requirements for this kind of thing, because I think that's the other uh, major issue that's really holding us back right now. So um, with chips, they, they keep getting faster and cooler. Uh, the cooler stuff is important. And I can just tell you guys just from my practical wor uh, world use, you know, I got the new Apple chips, the silicon. If you guys have these these M chips, they're amazing. I, I, and I, I've said that so many times on the channel that they're just absolutely fantastic. And the size of the computers keeps getting smaller and smaller. And now with this, you know, quantum convenience stuff, and I don't know how far we are away. It could be 30 years, it could be 40 years, maybe 10 years, who knows? Um, I, you know, reducing the size of stuff is, is essentially what we're, we're talking about. But again, um, I, I think power concerns are very real. Uh, and, and the other thing is, is too, is like, what are the costs of this stuff going to end up being to where you can get it into, you know, your hands, the, the consumer. Um, certainly at the enterprise level or, you know, universities or governments or whatever, you know, they'll be putting money into this stuff, I'm sure. Um, one thing I will say is um, always be cautious on what companies say. Because remember, they have to please shareholders. They have to make a profit. And Wall Street's just like, okay, you got this cool tech. Where's the money? All right, <laughs> show, show, show me the money. That, that, that's what it's about. Um, put it in the hands of someone like a Musk. Uh, and this is interesting that he was already, you know, tweeting with with Sundar because already Musk is licking his chops, thinking, okay, you know, my my Tesla scam and the FSD scam is kind of slowing down. What's the next space thing? And you know, for all we know, Elon Musk will make some sort of announcement like, guys, you know, we're we're gonna develop quantum computing. It's going to be here, you know, next year and help us go to Mars. Don't put it past Musk. I wouldn't be shocked if he starts mentioning that stuff. And that's sort of why I just wanted to, you know, give a little bit more realistic take on, on this thing. Like I said, I, I think the technology is is real, but how far are we from any useful application from said thing? Uh, I was looking at, you know, Google's uh, chart thing here. I'll show it to you guys. Um, they said, <clears throat> it says our quantum computing roadmap. I guess we're at what milestone two or no they just crossed milestone two so you know we're heading towards milestone six but we're, i think we're pretty far away from from, from that um and, and this idea of like you know binary o's and ones and now we're at like o's ones and then superposition kind of thing um true story it, it reminds me i've been watching this tv show on apple called dark matter and that's what that's all about it's about like multiple realities superposition uh, the show, the Loki show, is about different timelines and these kind of things, and it it, it just it the this you know quantum computing, quantum mechanics, this kind of stuff. Um, it it sounds like sci-fi, but I, I think there is real science behind this. It's just that a lot of this stuff is is you know theoretical, and then again, you got to get to a real use value. Um, that's my take on it. I, I looked through everything, and and like I said, I I think it's smart. Um, but for me, that I, I you know I and I I have a little bit biased here. I tend to trust, say, researchers at universities that are, you know, fully dedicated just to pure science and pure research, opposed to someone like a Google who's, you know, going for a profit. So I, I, I don't dispute Google has a lot of smart people over there and stuff like that. Um, but understand they have, you know, a marketing department, they sell you products, and, um, you know, they have a stock, of course, and Wall Street investors want to get their uh, money back. Um, when they'll actually ever make any profits on this kind of stuff remains to be seen. There are going to be other com competitors in this space, be it Amazon, uh, IBM, maybe even Apple will jump in this game, and I'm sure Elon will figure out a way, maybe build a new computer, and, and who knows, he'll call it like X Quantum Computing <laughs> or or XQ. Actually, that would be perfect for Elon. If you're watching this, you can call it XQ Anon, right? That would be the, the next uh, uh, chapter for you in quantum computing. So um, guys, if, if you're... Uh, an expert in this field, quantum computing. I know we have a lot of smart people in, in the channel. Um, please chime in. What do you think about Google's announcement? What do you think about my assessment of this? I'd love to hear your thoughts and um, I'll catch you in the next video.